I'm already pumped, and uh, up comes walking Dan Moret, my buddy. Dan. thing I tell Dan is uh, when we're recording make sure you look into the camera give me a little wave action you know something make it not so boring like you're just riding along and and uh, fortunately he did that it makes for better video stopped in the middle of the road just to change the camera back because it looked like we were going to get to a good spot. somewhere wanted to make sure I was still on the seat. The good news was we had a bit of a gap and we had to play a little catch up to the group.
to the left of us was the Columbia River, and uh, the view coming down this hill was really great. It made for a great backdrop. This is the bridge that goes into Longview, and uh, clear day going up that bridge with motorcycles. Man, it was so nice. The view was unbelievable. You see in a little bit, Dan gives some kind of a gesture that's like, man, this is pretty cool. And it's, it's one of those good to be alive, thank you God moments. lunch stop on day one. We pulled into a park and uh, everybody had sandwiches and chips. Got to hang out and kind of yap with each other for a while. It was pretty cool. I'm horrible with names of new people, but uh, I know that the guy in the center here is Dan Noble, rides the BMW. The guy in that white shirt had the Yamaha FC9. I think that was Gary, the guy that was doing all the cooking. Dano's giving me the... I don't know what that sign is there. What is that, Dano? Yeah, that one. The guy sitting on the bikes, the guy always sits in the back at church on Sunday night. I barely even got Pastor Ken in the shot there. Uh, maybe I was worried he was gonna like send me to detention or something for an episode. So we got to the hotel and I start uh, swinging the camera around to get an idea how many bikes are there. Uh, there's Ken looks like walking in somewhere. And there's uh, the guy who parks right up front like a boss. I was just talking about that in another video. Guy's name is Don and had a story about my brother Don that he told me right off the bat. It was pretty funny. Uh, there's the side of the bikes where, uh, where we parked our bikes. and. Uh, this isn't reflective of all the bikes that were there, because I know there were more than what we're just showing, but you get the idea. I love this photo of me uh, getting photos of other people taking photos. It just The sign of the times is pretty cool. This was the start of day two, uh, right down through the mountains. A uh, big uh, cavern down there on the right looked pretty cool. I like the rock wall on the left side there behind Dan. That looked pretty neat. There's a lot of things you can say about that tunnel that just weren't right, but uh, I'm a doofball and that's what I do in tunnels. So at one of the breaks, I uh, talked to Jeff about switching places with Dan for a while so I could get some footage. We got this cool shot around the corner, it looked pretty neat. I also uh, gave him the tips to, you know, look back at the camera, you know, do some, give us some action there. He, so occasionally he'd, uh, he'd give the old look back. And uh, what was funny is that he did that I don't know, for however long he was in front of me, thinking the camera was running the whole time, and I did not have it running. So every time he turned around and looked back, I snickered, thinking, well, that look was a waste, but it was pretty funny. The other thing that I thought was, was uh, pretty ironic was how many times poor Jeff crosses over that center line. And uh, so the good, the good part about having it on video is Jeff can watch this and... Uh, Make an adjustment there, maybe take her to the right about a foot, might give you a little more room just in case.
So this is what can happen when you sit on somebody's bike when they're not around. Yo, just trying it out, man. Nice bike. That was a big bird. Dan probably knew just what kind it was. Check out the size of this pebble Dan and Jeff would point out to make sure I don't hit it. Wow. It's too bad that, this, uh, that the camera wouldn't pick up what was over the other side of that wall because it was a windy road that looked so cool looking down that mountainside seeing it. I didn't miss a gear there, I just do that when I get excited. So not every ride can be perfect and uh, occasionally you come up to something like this. And I'm thinking, uh, you seen the bike here, Mr. Roadman? Uh, it doesn't look like it's got knobby tires on it. Do I got to put it in four-wheel drive? How am I supposed to get through here? So it's uh, got me wondering, is next year's ride going to be going through like a lake or something? Because I'm pretty sure my bike don't float. One of the things that I notice about Pastor Ken, he's a great listener, and I'll, you hear him at church, great preacher too, but you, then you get to know him, you start talking with him, and then you realize, you know, he's sitting there nodding and smiling and taking it all in, and I've been talking 15 minutes and he hasn't said anything. And everybody who knows me says, well, that's everybody who's talking to you. start of uh, day three we're headed home I've had two nights where I guess I was too amped up and I just couldn't sleep both nights so day three I'm coming on no sleep right home and nobody knows I'm in the back dozing and in and out in and out and it doesn't help that I've spent the last couple of days right behind Harley and Honda guys that are they, they're keeping a good pace for the group keeping everybody together nice and we're being safe that part's great uh, but but I'm sleepy, man. I need, I need something to wake me up. And then it's like an angel whispered into our group leader's ear. And uh, he comes over and says, Hey, why don't you and Dan uh, uh, go ahead and take the lead there at uh, the top of that hill. There's some really good corners. I think you'll have fun. Wow, that was the night. So uh, Dan and I go ahead and peel off of the group and uh, look back in the mirror back there. And there's uh, Jeff Ward. He's like, I'm... I'm not uh, going to let you guys just go and leave me here, so he comes. By the end of the ride, we looked back there and uh, Stretch on the VTX uh, came with us too, so that was, that was pretty cool. Poor guys got to enjoy that. So uh, either I thought Dan was waving me by because uh, he wanted me to pass him or... Or maybe I just was thinking he was waving me by, or maybe he was gonna wave me by, or just in case I thought I'd go. I think it Dan slowed down, because I, I think I hit 60 there. Great guy behind us driving a red gold wing, and he kept giving me peanuts throughout the ride. Don't remember your name, I think it was George or Alvin or Alfred or something like that. We get uh, stopped on this road. Somebody had a head on or something down there, and I'm sitting in uh, my mesh jacket, and it's hot. And I'm like, let's get down this hill. And then traffic starts, and my jacket's off, so I'm trying to hold my jacket while we're going. And anyway, it was fun. Oh yeah, and it's uh, not all about me. I did whisper a prayer for whoever that uh, had that issue with the head on there like a good Christian would. I'm pretty sure the guy hanging off to the left here with his arms up in the air waving at us was Scott Lute, the guy who put the ride on. So uh, it was pretty cool. We got excited. It was 
great to see Brian Newsom after not seeing him in a while. And uh, if you haven't had him do any work for you for painting, pinstriping, that kind of stuff, he's amazing. So give him a shout. A quick shout out to my small group guys, uh, Larry and Doug and uh, Terry and Jeff. It was a great weekend and more than just a ride, it was life-changing, so I would recommend it to anybody.